This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome everyone to Too Good To Be True, and of course thank you to all the listeners. Are you ready for a revealing show about astrology, numerology, and tarot? Before we start getting into details, let's just briefly talk about psychic insight and how we apply it. We choose a subject, then research it, and based on that research, we determine what we think needs to be explained by creating a series of questions. Then Justina provides psychic insight to answer those questions. At the end of the process, we have psychic insight into a subject. At that point, it is a question of individual belief. Now let's go through the disclaimers. Here are the disclaimers. Neither of us claim to have any expertise in any subjects that we discuss. We relate information we find through research in the psychic insight. We are always delighted to hear from the listeners. The show only lasts an hour. We don't have the time to present exhaustive research on any topic. This means that there will be information that we miss. We want to provide a basis for the psychic insight. We don't care if a theory turns out too good to be true, as the show name suggests. We're only interested in finding out more of the truth about topics. Spirit can only relate insight that is appropriate for our time in history. Free will cannot be affected. Only comments that are appropriate for our time can be given through the psychic insight. Much of the subject matter and shows will have already been covered again and again in other media. We want to look into subjects in a new, different way and be thought-provoking. We are not so good with pronouncing names and we apologize. Finally, we are not astrologers, numerologists, or tarot readers. We only have general knowledge of the subject. Our explanations will be oversimplistic and we are not claiming to be experts in these subjects. We do not wish to offend experts in any of these fields. Thank you, Justinia. You let me choose the subject of astrology, numerology, and tarot. Yes, the planets had aligned, so I knew you were going to suggest these subjects. No, I'm just kidding. I had no idea you were going to suggest these subjects. Why did you think of looking at the planets, numbers, and the cards? Because I'm curious, YouTube has many videos with lots of hits with astrologers, numerologists, and tarot readers. Many people believe in their ability to foretell the future or provide personality profiles. So why don't you start with astrology? Astrology can be very complicated, so let's try and stick to basic information. Yeah, the first thing I discovered is that there are dozens of different types of astrology. I would just mention Western astrology because I I had to pick one. It's probably the one that most people have come across unless they are especially interested in the subject of astrology. I guess the idea of astrology is to provide a horoscope, the key to your personality and path. This is read from the birth chart and is based on the relative position of the planets at the time of the, of the person's birth. Yes, there are 12 zodiac signs, although some sources say 13, including Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer. We will stay with the traditional 12 for now. The 12 signs are divided into the four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. Fire and air signs are considered to be masculine, whereas water and earth signs are considered to be feminine. The 12 signs are also divided into three qualities, cardinal, fixed, and mutable. What do these all mean? In astrology, cardinal signs are active, self-motivated, insightful, and ambitious. Fixed signs are associated with stabilization, determination, depth, and persistence. Mutable signs are associated with adaptability, flexibility, and sympathy. I think that most people know that your zodiac sign depends on your date of birth. So if you were born between April 20th and May 20th, your sign is Taurus the bull. Let's split up the signs by the four elements. The fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. The earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. The air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And the water signs are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. 
Yeah, Aquarius is a water bearer, water bearer, yet it is an air sign, which is really confusing. But let's now group the signs by the qualities, cardinal, fixed and mutable. Uh, the, the cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. The fixed signs are Leo, Taurus, Aquarius and Scorpio. The mutable signs are Sagittarius, Virgo, Gemini and Pisces. The element defines the general personality type. People with fire signs are apparently strong, self-assured, creative, and fun. People with earth signs are apparently dependable, practical, and conservative, yet fairly materialistic. People with air signs are considered apparently commutative, intellectual, clever, and fair. People with water signs are apparently emotional, empathetic, receptive, and feel things deeply. But doesn't each zodiac sign have its own ruling planet? That's true. Ruling planets for ancient or traditional astrology are as follows. Aries, Mars. Taurus, Venus. Gemini, Mercury. Cancer, the Moon. Leo, the Sun. Virgo, Mercury. Libra, Venus. Scorpio, Mars. Libra, Venus. Scorpio, Mars. Sagittarius, Jupiter. Capricorn, Saturn. Aquarius, Saturn. And Pisces, Jupiter. The planets provide an added dimension to the qualities of the sign. We should mention that in modern astrology, there are 12 planets, but we are trying to keep things as simple as possible. Uh, we can talk about the qualities uh, after the break that's coming up. Why don't you take us into the break, Justina? Yes, after this short break, we'll continue with our discussion of astrology. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit us at www. XZBN.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi Fi, you can still listen to the X Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X Minus One, Dimension X. Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back to Too Good To Be True. And before the break, we were talking about astrology and we were just talking about the qualities involved with astrology. So dad, can you please start explaining about this? Yeah, the cardinal quality apparently means being clever and wanting to win. The fixed quality apparently means being determined, reliable and persistent. The mutable quality apparently means being flexible, versatile and highly resourceful. That seems to be a bit of a reach that one twelfth of the population would have similar personalities. I'm not sure how well these descriptions fit, but isn't that the idea of astrology to provide a horoscope based on the birth chart? For that, we have to talk about the houses and the planets. Yeah, the seven planets are as follows with a brief description, including their meaning. Uh, the sun, uh, purpose and will to exist. The moon, emotions and inner mood. Mercury, ability to perceive. Venus, values and an indicator of what is appreciated. Mars, action and the use of will. Jupiter, growth and ability to integrate into society. And Saturn, responsibilities and the rules established in life. 
Of course, the sun and the moon are not planets, but that's how they are described in astrology. The 12 houses correspond to different aspects of life, with each one being ruled by a zodiac sign, starting with Aries and ending with Pisces. These are as follows in much shortened descriptions. I will take the first six. The first house, self, including aspects such as personality or appearance. The second house, money and possessions. The third house, communication. The fourth house, home and everything associated with it. The fifth house, children, creativity, and fun. And the sixth house, daily work, service, diet, and health. I will continue with the last six. Seventh house, marriage, business par partnerships and contracts. Eighth house, death, regeneration, and taxes. Ninth house, philosophy, religion, law, and learning. Tenth house, status, honor, and community power. 11th house, community, large groups and friends. And finally, the 12th house, the subconscious, the hidden self. The most important houses are the first, fourth, seventh and 10th houses. These are called the angular houses. So that's very briefly self, home, marriage and status. So we have lots of lists, but how is the chart actually created? Yeah, we, before we can discuss that, we have to mention that each house has its natural ruling planet. For example, the third house dealing with communication has the natural ruler of Mercury under the zodiac sign of Gemini. The natural ruling planet is at home in that house. Now we are ready for the creation of the chart, right? Yeah, for a birth chart, you determine the position of the planets at the exact time of your birth from the exact location of your birthplace. The birth chart is a circular map that shows which planets reside in which houses based on their position at the time and at that location relative to the sun. The Earth is at the center of the circular map. The aspects are the distances between any two points in the chart and are used to see which planets combine to create greater or lesser influences on the hor horoscope. So if the moon is in your third house, for example, at the time of your birth, you're very responsive, communicative, and curious. Another example would be the sun in your fourth house. You would take pride in your home, your personal life, and maintaining a comfortable existence. So we have to talk a little about a little about the sun, moon, and rising signs. Uh, your sun sign is your zodiac sign. Your moon sign is determined by the zodiac sign the moon was in at the time of your birth. Uh, the zodiac signs are in the outer ring of the circular map of the birth chart. Your rising sign is the zodiac sign on the eastern horizon when you are born. Uh, the sun spends a month in each house, whereas the moon stays about two days. So when you look at your monthly horoscope, you have to consider up to three zodiac signs, sun, moon, and rising. So you may be an Aries with a Leo as the moon sign and a Gemini as the rising sign. But how are monthly horoscopes determined? Monthly horoscopes are written using Mercury, Venus, Mars, and the sun because these planets change position every month or so. The horoscope depends on which house, house the planets are moving through for a particular sign. There are similar principles applied for weekly or daily horoscopes, but to be complete, you will have to look at all three of your zodiac signs. What is meant by Mercury retrograde? I hear that a lot. Yeah, because Mercury is a planet situated closest to the sun, its orbit is much shorter than Earth. About three or four times a year, Mercury speeds past Earth, and that is when we experience a Mercury retrograde period. It looks like Mercury is moving away from us. So if Mercury is in retrograde, its influence is lessened. So apparently it is not a good time to get decisions from others. Even if a decision is made, it will be subject to change. So this is apparently a bad time for planning. Mercury retrograde periods are posted for each year on the internet. I think we have provided enough knowledge at this point. If you want to learn more about astrology, go to an expert. This is an attempt at an introduction by amateurs as a basis to frame questions. But one last question, who actually uses astrology? Given, uh, given uh, all the websites and YouTube videos, a lot of people, uh, probably a lot of people that keep it private, one in four Americans believe in astrology, apparently. This, this has been confirmed by Gallup polls. Uh, believers include famous personalities who are household names. Also, a famous president of the United States who has now passed away. But here is a quote from Albert Einstein. Astrology is a science in itself and contains an illuminating body of knowledge. 
It taught me many things. I am greatly indebt indebted to it, unquote. We will give Albert Einstein the last word and move on to numerology. I know you have mentioned it before and you do like numbers. Yeah, according to the website numerology.com, the definition is as follows for numerology. Uh, numerology is a universal language of numbers. By breaking down the patterns of the universe into numbers, we are able to uncover information about the world as a whole, as well as every individual, unquote. Apparently, each number has a personality or energy. Uh, Greek philosopher and mathematician Pythagoras and others believe that numbers were given to humans by the gods as confirmation of truth. Math is the language of science, so that makes sense. Which numbers are we talking about in numerology? The numbers through one, sorry, the numbers one through nine, as well as 11, 22 and 33. The double digit numbers 11, 22 and 33 are known as master numbers. Master number 11 is apparently associated with psychics and prophets and represents instinct. Master number 22 is apparently the most powerful number, combining the power of the master number of 11, along with a scientific approach. Master number 33 apparently represents a focus on humanitarian issues with no personal agenda. Why don't you provide some examples of how numerology is used? Yeah, I think that going through examples would be easier than trying to describe everything. Let's start with the life path number. Let's choose a date of birth, say July the 6th, 1935. So let's take the birth month. July is the seventh month, so that becomes seven. The birthday is on the 6th, so that becomes 6. The year, birth year is 1935, which if you add the digits 1, 9, 3 and 5 uh, and add, add them all up, you get 18. Then if you add the 1 and 8, that reduces to 9. Now add out all the single digits and you get 7 plus 6 plus 9 and that equals 22. We would normally reduce two digits into a single digit, but as stated, the numbers 11, 22 and 33 are master numbers requiring special attention. Those with a life path number of 22 have great spiritual understanding and ability to apply knowledge in a practical way and achieve enormous success. Well, who is that? You didn't pick the birth date at random, did you? 22 is the life path number of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. I didn't know the answer before I started crunching the numbers. Well, that's really impressive. What about another life path number? OK, let's try August the 26th, 1910. That's eight for August. Also eight for the 26th by adding the two and six. Uh, 1910 reduces to 11. We won't reduce that. So adding eight plus eight plus 11, we get 27. We reduce that to nine. Um, those born with a life path number 11 are natural leaders and they assume they are in charge even if they are not. So who is that? That's Mother Teresa of Calcutta. OK, one more, but not someone noted for good deeds. OK, let's pick May the 22nd, 1942. So that's five from May, 22 for the 22nd and um, 1942 reduces to 16, uh, which um, 16 reduces to 7. So we add 5, 22 and 7 and we get 34. Then you reduce that to 7. So uh, those born with a life path of number 7 have a loner quality. They need to learn to have faith. Uh, if they do not have faith, they tend to become very cynical and escape through drugs, alcohol, work and geography. So who is that? Uh, Unabomber Ted Gazinski, who certainly was a loner, who hid out in the woods. You knew that ahead of time, didn't you? I actually didn't. I'm as surprised as you are. Uh, we have a natural tendency to fit those things, these things together to great order, but all these life path numbers might have a ring of truth about them, but that's only based on the sample of three. Why don't you go on to the expression number? This is more complicated, involving assigning letters, numbers to letters of the alphabet, including uh, included in the birth name. I'm going to choose Mark Twain, whose real name is Samuel Langhorn Clemens. So the first, so, so the first row, these are the Pythagorean alphabet. Um, the number one is assigned to the letter A and so on until nine is assigned to the letter I. Then for the second row, uh, one is assigned to the letter J and so on until nine is assigned to the letter R. 
The, throw, the third road is number one through eight, assigned to letters S through Z. Now, this is how it works for uh, Mark Twain's real name. Uh, Samuel, and uh, I guess you'll have to uh, check this for yourself, um, is one plus one plus four plus three plus five plus three, which equals 17. Langhorn, that comes to three plus one plus five plus seven plus eight plus six plus nine plus five plus five, which equals 49. Clemens, we get three plus three plus five plus four plus five plus five plus one, which equals 26. So if we add 17, 49 and 26, it, we get 92, which reduces to 11 a master number. Uh, people with an expression number of 11 are uh, idealistic, inspirational and have powerful intuition and are able and are able at guiding and teaching. I don't know much about Mark Twain, but after a quick Google search, apparently he was a writer, humorist, entrepreneur, publisher, and lecturer. Yeah, Mark Twain is famous for his novels and his quotes. He was idealistic and inspirational impacted and impacted the world around him. Here are some of Mark Twain's quotes. Uh, Denial ain't just a river in Egypt. The more things are forbidden, the more popular they become. I never let schooling interfere with my education. And my favorite, common sense is very uncommon. So what happens to Mark Twain's expression number when using his pen name rather than his birth name? Interesting point. If you change your name, apparently your expression number will change. But he used both, so I don't know how that works. But for Mark Twain, we have Mark 4 plus 1 plus 9 plus 2, which equals 16. Twain, we get 2 plus 5 plus 1 plus 9 plus 5, which is 22. Add the 16 and the 22 and you get 38, which reduces to 11. Expression number 11 is the same number as for his birth name, Samuel Langhorn Clements. I don't know how it happened, but that makes sense. Well, we'll have to talk more about numerology and later tarot after this short break. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we were talking about numerology and talking about Mark Twain and how his birth name and the name he used to write actually came out to the same expression number. So dad, what other numbers should be considered in addition to life path and expression number we spoke about? Apparently there are lots of numbers that have been calculated, but there are five core numbers, life path and expression, which we've talked about, plus personality, heart's desire and birthday. Why don't you talk about the personality number for Elon Musk, whose birth name is Elon Reeve Musk? The personality number describes the first impression you make and is made up from all the consonants in the birth name. So we have for Elon Reeve Musk, LNN, which is 3 plus 5, which equals 8, R and B, which is 9 plus 4, which equals 13, and then we get MS and K, which is 4 plus 1 plus 2, which equals 7. So we add the 8, the 13 and the 7, we get 28, which reduces to 10. And then in turn, that reduces to 1. Uh, personality number one, people like to blaze their own trails. They know what they are masters of. Uh, they are masters of their own destiny. Well, Elon may have those traits. Why don't you go move on to the heart's desire number? Let's choose Helen Keller, the lady who could neither speak nor hear, 
but went on to achieve greatness. OK, for the heart's desire number, we need the vowels from the full birth name, which is Helen Adams Keller, which is as follows. So we have E and E, which is five plus five, which equals ten. And then we have A and A, which is one plus one equals two. And then we have E and E again, so that equals ten. So let's add ten plus two plus ten and we get twenty two, which is the most powerful master number. People People with the heart's desire number 22 want to leave something behind that the world will remember that is totally positive. I think that is true of Helen Keller. The last card number was the birthday number. Why don't you look at JFK? The late President Kennedy was born on May the 19th, 1917, which is just 100 years ago. The birthday number in includes the skills you possess as well as the challenges you will need to overcome. The birth date number for JFK is simply the 1 and 9 for the 19th of the month, which makes 10 reducing to 1. People with one birth date numbers are stubborn, strong willed and ambitious and can reach incredible heights in their careers, but they can experience difficulties in relationships. We got a lot of master numbers for famous people in numerology that made the subject quite interesting, but let's switch topics and now talk about tarot. That's the third subject that neither of us know too much about. You mentioned it to me and it started as a normal card game. Tarot can seem a little creepy and a little creepy to me. Some of the cards seem kind of negative. Yeah, it all started as a normal card game. Uh, tarot cards were used for a game similar to the modern game of bridge. Uh, the cards originated in Italy and were marked with suits of cups, um, swords, coins and polo sticks. The polo sticks later became staves or wands. Also included were the court cards consisting of a king and two male subordinates. Later editions were the queens, trumps and the fool. The trump cards were award cards. The total number of cards become seven, became 78, but there are many different types of tarot decks. I have heard the terms major arcana and minor arcana. What do these mean? Let's take the major arcana, I think it is, first. This consists of 20, 22 cards that reflect key archetypes or spiritual lessons in our lives. Each card depicts a scene featuring one or more persons. Examples of the major arcana cards are the Wheel of Fortune card or the Strength card. The Wheel of Fortune card reminds you that nothing is permanent and you must make the most of the lessons at the moment. The strength card is not about physical strength, but about mental strength, fortitude and courage. But what is the meaning when cards are dealt upside down? That would result with not shuffling the deck with all the cards the same way up. Yeah, I've found different opinions on this. Apparently a reverse card means a different energy from the cards. Non-reverse energy, uh, non-reverse means externally expressed energy, whereas reverse means internally expressed energy. Each card has its own energy, apparently, just like numbers in numerology. What about the minor arcana cards? What are those? In modern tarot, there are four suits of 14 cards, making 56 minor arcana cards total. The suits are cups, pentacles, swords and wands. Uh, the cups relate to the element of water and are representative of emotions, relationships, feelings and creativity. The pentacles relate to the earth and are representative of money, possessions, career and the physical realm. The swords relate to the elements of air and are representative of, of power, rationality, the intellect and thoughts. The ones relate, the element, relate to the element of fire and, is, and are representative of inspiration, spirituality, ideas and energy flow. So the dealer deals the cards, then reads them and then provides an interpretation. Yes, the dealer uh, deals a spread of cards. The simplest example is a three card spread, although a single card can be used to answer a yes, no question. The simplest interpretation of a three card spread is past, present and future. So I tried an online three card spread and got the following cards with none reversed. Uh, this is a shortened version of things. Uh, the Fool, anything is possible based on the past. The Empress, in short, apply heart and soul and use judgment in the present. The Four of Swords. In short, an inner retreat is required before returning stronger. I expect the skill of the tarot reader makes all the difference on the outcome of the reading. The actual explanations are much longer. I also tried an online five card spread that are um, 
individual cards on each side of a column of three cards. And the first card in this case on the left was the past. The column three cards are outcome, the present, and then reason causes. And then the final card on the right being the future. There are other five card spreads with different meanings assigned to the cards. So what do the five card readings say? Well, very briefly, my career is going to improve. I have a desire for change. I'm not so sure what all of that means, but I think it's time to move into the psychic insight. Why don't you ask the first question? Yes, uh, why did astrology develop? So basically astrology began because people started observing the planets in the sky and they didn't have too much else to do with their time. So they needed something to rely on and it was basically built into human instinct to be curious and explore everything around including what was in the sky. How did astrology develop? So it actually started with a small group of people who relied on the sky and the position of the planets where they started creating the first time and basing a lot of their lives on what was going on with the planets and the stars and things they could see in the sky. And then these ideas traveled from groups of people to groups of people and it became a larger concept. So basically, it was just some curious people who started it, and then it began to spread. Who decided the principles of astrology? So there are many different people who put their ideas together. So basically, there was original astrology, which was very simple, just based on observations. And then it became more complex as other people put their spiritual ideas with them. Are there really 12 zodiac signs or 13? So the thing is with zodiac signs, it is a lot of actually human concepts and constructs in a way. So we would say that the answer that would be in most people's minds and more accurate would be the 12 zodiac signs. Does it matter whether there are 12 or 13 zodiac signs? No, not really, since the 12 is what a lot of astro astrology is actually based on. So the 13th would really not make a difference. With many different types of astrology, does it matter which for a, for a horoscope? Yes and no. So some horoscopes are just based on made up ideas. So it is always important to make sure that what you are looking up is not just something in the type of tabloid the media made up or something like that. So it's important that the source is actually someone with a basis in astrology. Why do some people want to believe in astrology? One, it connects people to space and the planets and the basic human concepts of this. So one, it is something for people to believe in. Two, it's also something that people can follow. So a lot of people turn to astrology to basically see what life path they are on and have some guidance on their path. So there's nothing wrong with following astrology. But again, there is always free will so that the readings might not always be 100% correct, obviously. And a lot of them are pretty general, since each sign has a very, very characteristics of humans. Is, for example, Taurus an Earth sign? Yes. Does, for example, Taurus have a mutable quality? Yes. For the birth or other charts, does division into the 12 houses make sense? Yes. If your moon is in your third house at the time of your birth, are you responsive, communicative and curious? Yes. Do you have sun, moon and rising signs? Yes. Does the moon exert an effect on people? For instance, is a full moon, full moon a reasonable excuse for strange behavior? So we would never say to blame your behavior really on the full moon since there is free will involved. But yes, the location of the sun, the moon and the planets do affect the Earth's energy. Hence, obviously, the people are on the Earth, so it's affecting their energy in a way. But the important thing about the different signs and the different horoscopes and everything like that is that when a person is born, they choose their birth date. So their birth date is revolved around different characteristics. However, again, these characteristics may be pretty general since the horoscopes can't pinpoint exactly what the person's like. So for example, some signs may be one way or another because that person when choosing to be born may be that one way or the other way. So there's a lot of various characteristics involved. 
Do the planets exert influences on people, help forming their personalities and future? So we wouldn't say it is exactly the planets doing it, but what we can say is the planets do affect a person's energy, yes. How do free will and the influence of the planets interact? So again, that goes back to everyone does have free will. So let's say you are a Taurus. You may sometimes exert characteristics that aren't typically a Taurus's characteristics because you're practicing free will. But this again goes back to your birth date and when you were actually born, which obviously is based on Earth days. So it's all kind of based on the solar system and how the entire solar system works together as one. Do we need to be concerned about Mercury retrograde? Not at this time, no. But at any time? In the future, possibly, but it probably won't be a huge problem. Do psychic gifts help an astrologer? Their intuition does, yes. Is astrology only for fun? Yes and no. Some people do it as a hobby, but other people are actually making something very profound out of it. Should mankind be cautious when using astrology? Yes and no. Again, there's always the warning of free will and people will make their own choices. So there's nothing bad about astrology, but we also would say that people can't base their entire lives around astrology. What can we learn from astrology? Well, one, you can learn that when a person chooses to be born, a lot of the people born around the same time or on the same day actually do have similar characteristics. So this isn't by chance, this is just how it works. And also that the planets and the location of them do affect a person and it all involves energies. So obviously the solar system in each planet has its own type of energy in a way and this all affects each other and also affects Earth. But let's continue after this short break and start transitioning into talking about more about numerology. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back to Too Good To Be True. And before the break, we just finished the psychic insight about astrology. So Dad, can you please transition us into the subject of numerology? Sure. Uh, this is the first question on numerology. Is there a universal language in numbers? Yes and no. So numbers are universal, but they don't aren't always written as humans write them. Uh, do the numbers 1 through 9 and 11, 22 and 33 have unique energies? Yes and no. So to be able to feel these energies, you would need someone very specialized in energy work and studying the numbers. Who gave mankind numbers? So we can't say too much about this question, but what we can say is that it was part human, a human concept, 
in part not a human concept. Why was numerology developed? One, because numbers are so important to the world. So think about even when we talked about time. Time wouldn't exist without numbers. So numbers are one of the major things within not only humans, but science and a lot of other concepts, which wouldn't exist if there weren't numbers in place. So one, numbers are very important, and numerology combines basically a person with these numbers. So the mathematics and everything behind that is very important. And two, numerology, just like astrology and other concepts, gives people a path to follow and more information about themselves. So people like to relate back to their birth date or numbers about themselves so that they can correct and see if they are on the right path and see how closely it relates to their actual life. Who decided on the principles of numerology? So again, this was a concept that started and then expanded with a lot of intervention from ancient civilizations. Do the five core and other numbers provide the information that is claimed for them? Yes and no. Is a life path number 22 a coincidence for the Dalai Lama? No. Is an expression number 11 for both the name Samuel Langhorn Clements and the pen name Mark Twain a coincidence? No. Is a heart's desire number 22 for Helen Keller a coincidence? No. How do free will and numerology interact? So again, someone can always go down a different path. So for example, let's say that their number is actually 11 for their path, but they have the free will to choose to stick by it or not. So there's always a disclaimer that with these, yes, you can follow the information and learn about it, but it is not always set in stone. So a person's life path is already chosen. So yes, it should relate back to their numerology, but there are incidences when free will comes into play and their information will not match exactly with the numerology. Do psychic gifts help a num numerologist? Yes, intuition and with numbers, they seem to line up differently than astrology does. So these numbers are actually more concrete. Is numerology just for fun? Yes and no. Again, some people basically use numerology just for fun to see if they are down the right path or if it relates to their life. Will other people take it very seriously and rely on it? So some people, yes, do it for fun and others actually use it more to guide themselves. Should mankind be cautious when using numerology? Yes and no. Some people do use numerology and don't really know what they are doing. And when they do, the predictions and what they say may be general and not really be based on the actual numbers. So we would be cautious and make sure that if you do and go study numerology, that one, you studied it in depth, and two, you make sure the sources you use are actually legit sources. What can we learn from numerology? Basically, numerology shows the magic in numbers and how numbers are all around people. They just don't see it. Okay, now I'll change the subject to tarot. Uh, tarot cards can seem a little creepy at first sight. Is there anything to be afraid of? No. Uh, do car tarot cards have their own energy and meaning? Yes, if used properly. Shuffling the cards should mean cards being dealt at random, but are cards dealt at random during a tarot reading? Yes and no. So it again depends if the person actually really knows how to use the tarot cards or if they are just doing it for show. Why was tarot developed? Basically, again, it was a way for people to confirm if they were on the right path and be able to go through different events and see what to do next. Who decided on the principles of tarot? Basically, that relates way back when. Again, we can't say too much about it, but the knowledge was basically created. Does it make sense that cards are divided into major arcana and minor arcana? Yes. Do the minor arcana suits actually correspond to the four elements? Yes. Why are there so many different tarot decks? Again, there are obviously people who are fakes and just do it for show. And the other decks are actually created by the individual. So some people decided to put their own spin on the tarot cards so that their tarot readings would be unique. Is the skill of the tarot reader more important than the deck used? 
Yes. Do psychic gifts help a tarot reader? Yes. How do free will and tarot interact? Again, there's always the free will that one that the card or the tarot person who is actually giving the tarot reading will use. So, and they have the free will to use actually given an accurate reading and deal the cards at random. So there's also free will involved. So some tarot card people just do a show, which as you know, even some psychics do that. That's nothing new. But two, also along with that, is that basically some of the readings the people will again go against what the cards actually say or deny what the cards actually are. So there's free will involved to actually accept the reading or just take the reading and not use the information. Is tarot just for fun? Yes and no. Again, some people use tarot cards for fun or for show, while other people do actually do it seriously, and some of the results of tarot card readings are actually very surprising. Should mankind be cautious when using tarot? What we would say is to be cautious who you give your money to for a tarot card reading, since there are some people who just want to take the money. What can we learn from tarot? Basically, that not everything is random. So some of the cards, if done properly, actually do describe the person and the questions or the reading that is actually happening. And that people do have different gifts so some people are very talented at giving tarot card readings. What would be a better alternative to astrology, numerology or tarot? At this time, it's hard to give another human concept that would be better. But what we can say is that people should always use their intuition. So if they are drawn to certain numbers, yes, they should explore these numbers. Or if they want to hear about their sign or anything like that, then yes, we would recommend doing that. But again, a person always has free will on their path. So at the end of the day, it's always their choice. So they can get advice from these, but going through a problem or wanting to learn more about themselves, they still need to go through the process of learning themselves and making the choices themselves. So it's more of a guidance tool compared to the exact science of here's your answer. Okay, that's the end of the psychic insight. So I have to ask the question, are astrology, numerology, and tarot too good to be true? That depends on what you are prepared to believe. Well, that was very interesting. It seems that um, there is truth behind all of these three um, sciences or arts, arts and sciences, and that really you should uh, be careful, but go if you want to be, uh, want to go get a reading or, or a horoscope, um, go, to, uh, go to a true expert and be careful. Yeah, I think my takeaway from this is that when you're reading a magazine and you read your horoscope, it probably won't be very accurate. But if you actually go to someone who's knowledgeable in these subjects, you might actually learn a lot about yourself. And I think my other takeaway is that tarot readings are actually very unique, it seems. And it really seems to depend on the person actually giving the reading compared to the actual cards used. So that's an interesting point. Yeah, I did find tarot a little bit, um, I don't know, a bit like Ouija boards, I guess, or something I didn't want to go near. And uh, those cards like the tower and the death cards, I didn't, we didn't really mention them, go into it, uh, go into those cards, but um, they kind of gave me the creep. So it's nice to hear there's nothing, uh, nothing much to worry about there. Uh, why don't you mention the Facebook page? Yes, so as always, we would love to interact with the audience more. So you can go to Facebook and you can search Too Good To Be True. So it's T-W-O, then good, and then T-O, and then be true. So Too Good To Be True. And you can search us on Facebook and you can like our page, follow us, and we would love to hear from the listeners, hear some feedback, hear about some subjects, hear from anyone who's actually practicing astrology, numerology, tarot, and just interact and give some insight. Yeah. Um... I guess there's not much more to be said, except um, um, if you kind of believe um, good things happened and uh, if you're careful with your money, it might be very uh, worthwhile for you to to uh, find the right practitioner. Well, I think, too, it's interesting that um, all three of these subjects kind of have 
different aspects to them. So it seems like numerology is kind of concrete in the concepts, but I know in astrology, there's people that debate different concepts and the same with tarot. So it's interesting that there's so much more information about all three of these subjects. I mean, way more than we can cover in an hour and that each person kind of has their own spin on it, which is interesting. Yeah, um, I think I read somewhere it's kind of um, fairly straightforward to explain all of these, but uh, it takes years of study and practice and dedication for somebody to be really great at being a, a practitioner. So uh, um, if we've offended any experts in these areas, uh, um, we apologize sincerely, but we try to give an introduction as best we could so that we could come up with the right questions. But with that, why don't you sign us off, Justina? Yes, of course. Thank you to all the listeners and tune again soon for Too Good To Be True.